When I first saw the announcement for Mario Kart Live, I thought it looked awesome. Then, when I saw it in real life for the first time, I'll admit I thought it looked like garbage. You guys are doing a really bad job he's, of making this look good. He's on Oh, you have to see the video. <laughs> this looks terrible. Jackson, stop. It's not until you actually get to use it when everything starts to click. It's not until you hold the switch and look through that tiny camera for the first time when you start to see the creativity at work here. It's more than just an RC car. It's a full-fledged game that interacts with the real world around you so you can terrorize your dog. <laughs> Mario Kart Live is a toy that connects directly to your Switch. It comes in both Mario and Luigi variants and costs $100 and good luck finding it anywhere right now. The Nintendo Switch app is a free download on the eShop, so you can download it now in preparation for your shipment to arrive. The cart itself is a lot smaller than I was expecting. It's about the size of my big ass hands spread out. It's really just an RC car, but what makes it special is this camera right above Mario's head and the unique software at work that transforms this from being just any old RC car into a unique and very Nintendo experience. It's the easiest thing in the world to set up. In the box is a USB-C cable for charging, the gates to be used as waypoints, and the car itself. You can also find a link to print replacement gates if need be, similar to how they do it with Labo, but it's only on the Japanese Nintendo site. There's also a little paper in the box telling you to just go to the eShop and download the app. From there, you load up the app, press the little button on the side of the cart, and the app will ask to scan a little QR code. It'll also ask for you to create a license. Take this very seriously. It's your license. That's basically all it takes to hook up the cart to the console. Now, upon first glance, this is what confused me the most about Mario Kart Live. It connects to your Switch via a local Wi-Fi connection. It does not actually connect to your home Wi-Fi. So once you download the app and set up the cart and everything, you actually don't need a Wi-Fi connection in order to play. You just need a local Wi-Fi connection between the cart and the Switch itself. I've never seen a device work like this with a Switch before. I think it's really cool. Unfortunately, the connection isn't too great. Walls, and in some cases, people built like walls, might block the connection. It also only works at a very short distance, so only expect to be playing this in a small-ish living room or a room with little to no obstacles. The guy with the hair channel set up a pretty large course that worked just fine. It took a little finagling for them to get the switch in a position where it would have a good connection across the whole course. They put a dock in the middle of the course and had a desk set up at the end of the course so that you can play it docked. It was absolutely insane. Nintendo tells you not to use this cart outside. I don't think this has anything to do with the connection and a lot more to do with dirt, dust, debris, and moisture affecting the cart. So you can use it outside, just use it at your own risk and try to keep it away from any dust, dirt, debris, and make sure your play area is a nice, flat, even surface, like a tennis court or s something. You know what, just don't take it outside. Anyway, to set up a course, all you have to do is put down the waypoints. The cart can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. Tight turns are hard, but the cart can drift, so it's perfectly capable if you want to increase the difficulty for yourself. They say not to put it on steep inclines, but it's perfectly capable of some steep inclines. We managed to find the limit at 100cc. I don't think Nintendo is worried about the strain on the engine that the inclines would create. They could be worried about the cart falling off that incline, but it's built with that indestructible Nintendo plastic, so it's fine. Realistically, it's probably the fact that the CPU characters and items and such can't differentiate between inclines and flat surfaces. It assumes everything's flat, so CPUs and items just phase through them. 
The kit also comes with turn markers, but these are optional. Once your track is set up, the game will have you paint the course. You just do a slow lap around the course one time. Make sure you do this well, because this is what the device will use as a guide from this point on. Unfortunately, the app doesn't really remember these courses after you leave the game or stop playing. So if you leave your course set up, you will most likely have to paint the course again. It's not the end of the world, it's just a little inconvenient if you're trying to get a quick game in. The game itself consists of a few different game modes, but they are all variations of the course you already built. So if you want to really change things up, you're probably going to have to build different courses. You could do time trials or just roam the course freely, and you can change the speed from 50cc to 100cc. The higher the speed, the less battery life this thing will have. We got a solid two hours out of 100cc, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. The circuits are where it's at. They change up the design of the waypoints, the items you get, the obstacles, or the boosts. It's actually really creative, and this game mode is where you unlock all of the additional costumes for Mario or the different carts you can get. You can even unlock a mirror mode, 150cc and 200cc, which I can imagine will give you just minutes of battery life. Of course, there's multiplayer 2 with up to four carts. I only tested this with two carts and that worked pretty seamlessly. It requires each cart to be connected to its own individual switch. So for four carts, that's four individual switches and that could get pretty pricey. I don't see many people utilizing this functionality. I think at most, most people are gonna be using two carts. Playing the CPU is really fun. However, they do not have any regard for any real world obstacles on the course. They just phase right through them. Otherwise, if you're looking at the Switch and not the cart itself, this just feels like regular old Mario Kart. It controls incredibly well. There's even drifting. Items work the same as they do in Mario Kart. You can throw them in front of you or behind you. There's some jank, like the bullet bill, which attempts to take control of the cart, but does a pretty poor job if the course is complex. The course that I built had a pretty hard time dealing with the corners of my wall. I must have painted the course too close to them, so it always looked like they were part of the road and I'd smash into them very frequently. So, like, no, it's not perfect. There are limitations, obviously, but what's here works surprisingly well for the technology that's packed into a little $100 device. It's easy to dismiss this as just a camera strapped to an RC car, but it's the software that's coupled with it that makes it worth that price point. And, you know, RC cars can get pretty expensive too. The battery is pretty short because, well, it had to be light and cheap. The Wi-Fi isn't that great because, again, it had to be cheap. Maybe it could have been improved with a detachable antenna. I'm also immensely disappointed by this little tiny six inch USB-C cable. Not everybody has room in their entertainment center for this cart. But keep in mind, these are all just minor shortcomings. It's still a really fun device to play around with. I was super impressed by it. It's one of the coolest physical items that Nintendo has come out with in a really long time. Nintendo is constantly developing creative and fun ways to utilize the unique technology that's in the Switch. I'm sure you can get a general idea by seeing the game capture that Mario Kart Live utilizes the AR technology really well, but I promise it's a whole nother thing to experience it. You get sucked into the game world, so much so that little things like seeing people or picking up the cart feels super weird. You forget that you're driving this thing around the real world until something breaks that immersion. But it is a peripheral, and at the end of the day, or week, it might just end up in the closet with the Labo and the racing wheels. I'd say this is a great gift for somebody who plays Mario Kart frequently. Maybe you have a crew that you play a lot with. It would be fun to bring this thing around to your next Mario Kart get-together. 
it would also make for a fun weekend if you don't mind spending $100 on the experience. I can't stress this enough. It is really fun, but just like every other gimmicky gaming peripheral, it will end up in the closet eventually. But is that so much of a bad thing? It only matters that you enjoy your time with it, not how short that time is. So what do you guys think about Mario Kart Live? Is this something that you're interested in? Is this something that you want to try to track down and get? Have you tried to track it down and you're having a hard time because Nintendo's doing that whole, you know, they're, they're not keeping up with demand. I get it though. This year, everybody's been pretty backed up. Nintendo's been struggling with keeping up with production on a lot of things. There are some aspects of Mario Kart Live that seemed like they were thoughts that were never completely fleshed out. Like the Toad announcer table. There's a lot of really cool little things in this game. Like I loved seeing aspects from the original Super Mario Brothers in one of the courses. That was really fun. But I'm sure given more time and resources, they would have put more into the software for this thing. Anyway, this is supposed to be the end. Leave in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Also, Guy with the Hair posted a video over on their channel showing off their whole course that they built. They spent a lot of time on it and it was really freaking cool. Also, our podcast is back tonight on twitch.tv slash wolfden and then it'll be on youtube.com slash wolfden podcast tomorrow. So join us live on Twitch, or if you want to stay on YouTube, you just got to wait till we post it the next day. But of course, the most important thing that you can do, the easiest thing to help support this channel right here is just subscribe. Make sure notifications on because you can't rely on YouTube to tell you. And sometimes you can't even rely on the notifications. Just make sure you check back at least once a week. I post videos at least once a week. And share this video with a friend, a friend who Maybe you play Mario Kart with, maybe just someone you can convince to get this thing so you can play with it yourself. I'm always looking out for you. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.